السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear colleagues and friends Hope you are all doing well It's always my pleasure to be with you uh, This week's station will be according to your request After the vote we did uh, on the group You asked for the labor word prioritization The easy abstain station So today we will discuss this station And we will try to know how to proceed and how to approach this station during the time of handover. Okay. So this is a structured discussion station that will assess the patient safety, communication with colleagues, information gathering, and applied clinical knowledge. You will be an ST5 on call for the delivery unit. You arrived for the handover at 7.30 a.m. With you, there is one ST2 and one ST5 anesthetist. The coordinating midwife who started her duty at 7 a.m., half an hour before you. There are eight band six midwives. So there are eight midwives. There are band six midwives on duty. Four of them can suture an episiotomy. Three can insert an IV line. And one is newly qualified. The on-call consultant is currently assisting the previous on-call group in a cesarean hysterectomy for a patient with postpartum hemorrhage. You will have the delivery unit board and any further data will be provided on request from the examiner. So this station will be for 10 minutes during which you are expected to formulate and justify the management plan for each patient on the board. You are expected to prioritize the cases according to their degree of emergency or urgency. You have to delegate the tasks properly to other team members on duty. The examiner will ask you some questions and you have to show your leadership abilities. This is a different point that you have to show it here in this type of station. So this will be an example of the labor word board. As you can see, it's full of patients. Usually you will have eight patients, but sometimes you will have a full board. There are patients in the labor ward. There is bereavement room. There is a recovery room, HDU, midwife related unit, and patients are waiting to come in. So we will try to know how to approach in this station. Actually, this station will be a very easy station and it can be a very difficult station. To be honest, there is no key answer for this type of station. But in the station, the marking will be either fail, borderline, or pass. So today, what I'm going to tell you is to how to avoid failure in this station. If you avoid failure, this means you have two possibilities, either borderline, or pass with some organization of your thoughts, of your thoughts, inshallah, you will have the bus mark. So the first and the most important thing, please, please forget that this is an exam. You are an obstetrician. You know how to manage the cases in the labor world. So be yourself, please. Imagine that you are in a real labor world and forget the exam and the stress. I know it is a difficult advice. It will be difficult to uh, put it in your mind in a real exam, but try to practice without stress. Try to do this station as if you are at the time of handover during your shifts in your hospital. Believe me, this is the first point. If you do it, you can avoid the stress and the too much adrenaline that will affect your performance in this station. There is no fixed agenda in this station. The patients may come with different scenarios, so you should be aware how to manage the different patients in labor, which is your daily work. So there is no worries at all about the scenarios. The only worry will be about your performance because of your stress. So please, first of all, be yourself, forget the exam, and imagine that you are in a labor room. And please don't rush to finish the station. If you find so many patients on the board, go step by step and whatever you will finish, that's enough for you. The examiner 
will take you, he will prompt you. If he finds that you are too late, he will push you to move. So don't rush, don't rush, please. Give each case here on time and with organization, you can finish the cases one by one. Please don't take decision only based on the information in the labor word board. You have to ask the examiner or the coordinating midwife because at the beginning, you may see that there is one case which is urgent on the board, but when you ask more information, you may find another case which is more urgent. So please don't take any decision without asking about more details about the cases on the board. These are the key points in this station. Nine key points. If you stick to them, you will avoid failure in this station. Number one, you should have a situational awareness. You should be aware of the circumstances and the personnel around you. We will clarify each point of this later. So number one, situation awareness. Number two, please my advice, go room by room and use the SPAR tool to be organized during your talk. Ask for more details, please. As we said, don't take any decision without enough details that will you can get from the examiner. Always remember the priority. This is a priority station. So with the stress of the exam, you may forget to mention if this case is urgent or non-urgent or semi-urgent. So always remember to mention the priority. Call for help. The most important safety point in any safety domain is to call for help. If you didn't call for help, especially in emergency situation or in urgent situation, this is a failure point. Assign tasks to colleagues appropriately. During the assignment, please avoid undermining your colleagues. We will come to this point in detail. Then if you have a patient which is in preterm labor, please, you have to mention that you will discuss for the availability of quotes in the NICU or in the special care unit. So in any preterm labor, discuss the availability of cuts. Number nine, ensure the safety of other patients. If you are going to be engaged in an urgent case, or you are going to leave the labor ward for an emergency cesarean or laparotomy in the theater. So you have to mention that you will ensure the safety of other patients in the ward before being engaged in another situation. So these are the nine key points in this station. Always remember, if you managed to pass these key points, you will pass the station, inshallah. So, number one is the situation awareness. You need to be aware of the time of the handover. It will be written during the scenario, and it will be written here at the top of the board. So at the top of the board, the handover time is at 7.30 a.m. This is very important because this will give you an idea about the time management in your cases when you are going to take a decision for examination, uh, when you are going to take a decision for instrumental delivery or for your fetal blood sampling. So this is very important to know the time of handover and the time of last observation, the time of the last BV, the time of the fetal blood sampling, the time once the patient started her second stage of labor. So you should be aware of the time of the handover in relation to the time of the last observation to know how to timely manage your cases. Very important point, you are a team leader now, so you should know who are the other team members with you in duty and their level of competence. And the, there will be different members in the team and with different level of competence, you should be aware of their level and you should ensure their competency and they signed off of a special procedure before delegating the task to them. This will save you from the point of communication with colleagues and the point of safety. Situation awareness about where is your consultant. Always be aware 
where is the consultant? Usually in the scenarios, he will tell you that the consultant is busy in the theater or in the critical care. So he's putting you in a situation that you are alone now, but still in urgent cases, you should call the consultant or if he is busy and he cannot come you and you need help, so you can call a consultant of a different group. So number one, the situation awareness. We said, this is the time on the labor board. This is for the handover time. And you can see here, for example, in the recovery room, this patient has elective cesarean since four hours. So you should be aware of the timing for proper team management. The team members. This is the, the speciality training and education program for the training program in UK. They will start their training by foundation year one and year two. Then they will get national training number and they will go into the official training program, which will start by ST1 and ST2. These are the senior house officers or SHO. After passing the first part of MRCG, they will become the registrars, which are ST3, ST4, and ST5, or the intermediate training. So ST5, ST4, ST3 is a registrar. That's why I don't like you when you are introducing yourself in the simulation patient task to the patient. I'm one of the senior doctors in the clinic today. I'm sorry, you are not a senior yet. You are a registrar. Take it easy and tell the patient, I'm one of the doctors in the clinic today. No need for registrars, no need for seniors. The patient will not understand this and this will not affect the communication at any point. After passing part two or part three MRSOG, this is the advanced trainee, ST6 or ST7. They can be also called as a senior registrars. These are the different categories or different levels of the specialist trainee. Regarding the midwives, it will be written in the scenario. The midwife is either band seven. Band seven means a senior midwife or the coordinating midwife. Or they will tell band six midwives and band six midwives will be different levels of competence, but he will give you the details, which one can do the episiotomy, which one can do the IV line only, and which one is a newly qualified as in our case. This is the curriculum progression for uh, speciality trainees. It's large one, so many pages. If you want, you can go through it. But the conclusion of this, and what you need to know in the labor world priority station, the competences of each one of them. So if we are going to discuss about the SHO or senior house officers, the ST1, what the ST1 can do, he can take history, he can examine. Whatever procedure he will do later, he will do it under supervision. Until he will be signed off and signed off means he will have three summative OSATs, one of them from a consultant. So he can do manual removal of the placenta, non-rotational and instrumental delivery, evacuation and curettage. He can suture and episiotomy. He can open and close the abdomen during cesarean section. All these uh, interventions or these maneuvers are done under supervision. The ST2, what he can do, he can do what the ST1 can do, plus he can suture the episiotomy without supervision. He can interpret the CTG, but he has to inform the registrar. He can take a consent. He can do fetal blood sampling and basic cesarean section, but under supervision. So these are the level of contents of ST1 and ST2. And please, always before delegating any task to anyone in the labor world, says the word, after ensuring her level of competence and that he signed off of this procedure. Okay, next the registrars, which means ST3, ST4 and ST5 at the beginning of his year. So they can do non-rotational instrumental delivery. They can do cesarean section without supervision, fetal blood sampling unsupervised. They can interpret and react to the CTG and they can repair the perineal tears, third and fourth degree tear, but under supervision. 
the advanced trainee or the senior registrars, the ST5 at the end of year five or the ST6 or ST7, they can repair the perennial tears, third and fourth degree perennial tears. They can do rotational instrumental delivery. They can do complex cesarean section and intermediate laparoscopy like doing cystectomy or salpingectomy for cases, for example, of ovarian cyst, ovarian torsion, or ectopic pregnancy. So these are the level of competences, but please, before delegating any task to anyone in the labor world, say, I will ensure his level of competence and he signed off of this procedure before delegating the task to him. Again, the midwives, as we said, either band seven, which are the coordinating midwife, she can coordinate the work. She can interpret and react to the CTG. She can conduct the delivery. She can cut and repair the episiotomy. Band six, as we said, different level of competences. They can insert IV line. They can interpret the CTG and inform. They can conduct the delivery. They can cut an episiotomy, but to suture or no will depend on their level of competence and their experience. So these are the competences for the team members in duty. Before delegating any task to anyone again, please remember, I will inform him to go after ensuring his level of competence and he signed off of this procedure. Again, please be aware where is your consultant in case you need in urgent cases, call him or call another consultant from a different group to help you in emergency. This is a failure point if you didn't mention it. Okay. Second point after situation awareness is how you will go to uh, the patient, how you will proceed in the, the, in the cases. My advice, please, go room by room. I know some of you will prefer to take a panoramic look over the board, and then they will choose the most urgent one on the board, and they will start by this case. But with the many number of patients in the world, you may be lost. If you have two urgent cases, one semi urgent and one non urgent, because of the stress of the exam, you may be lost and you will be confused which one is urgent and which one is not urgent. So please, the safe way is to go room by room. Another point why I prefer room by room, because not all the data mentioned on the board, you can depend on it for categorizing the patient into urgent or semi-urgent or non-urgent. This is a structured discussion again. So you will ask the examiner. So the examiner may give you an information. For example, you can find in the board one patient which is normal. There is no abnormal observation, but, but when you ask the examiner about her blood pressure, he will tell you that the hair blood pressure is 190 over 120 and the album is three plus. So now the category changed completely. So you cannot categorize the patient without enough information. Go room by room, please. This is the safest way. To be more organized during your discussion, use the SPAR tool. This will make a difference between you and different candidates. If you are going case by case in organized way, you will do it properly. So use the SPAR tool. All of us know what is the SPAR. SPAR means the situation, the background, the assessment, and then the recommendation. Usually, the situation and the background will be written on the board. You will have part of the assessment, some information from about the examination. At this point, the assessment, you need to know more information about the patient. This is a part where you will ask the examiner. So you will ask the examiner about any further data you need to know about the patient either by history or by examination or investigation. The final will be recommendation. And once you reach the recommendation, remember five W's. What will be done? Means as a plan of management. Who will do? means which one of the team you will delegate this task to him, when it will be done, now it's time for categorization. If it's urgent, semi-urgent or non-urgent. Why it will be done, now you are justifying your management plan 
and where it will be done, either in the labor ward, or this patient will go to the HDU, or you need to examine the patient or do forceps in the theater. So this is the easiest way to be organized and not to forget anything in the station and to go quickly step by step. So situation and the background from the board, assessment some from the board and some where you will ask your examiner or the labor ward coordinator, then the recommendation, what will be done, who will do this, when he will do, why he will do this, and where it will be done, either in the labor ward or in the theater or in the HD. Example, if we will take the first case here, when you are going to discuss this case, you will say the situation here. Don't say the situation, just mention it in one sentence. So I am explaining now, where is the situation? The situation, this is bara five, at 38 weeks, she's early in labor and with high head. What's her background? This lady is 30 years old. All the previous deliveries were normal. She has no significant medical or surgical history. So now we have the situation and the background. Now the assessment. The only assessment which is written on the board here that the patient is high head and early in labor. Is this enough? to mention the category and to mention the management plan? Of course, no. So this is the part where you have to ask your examiner. You need to ask him about so many data in this case. You need to ask about how far she's in labor, how far she, the cervix is dilated, what is the station and the position of the head, what is the condition of the membrane, what is the expected fetal weight by ultrasound and by clinical examination? What about the CTG? What is the, about the fetal heart and the contractions? So these are the very important criteria you need to ask in each patient in the labor world. According to the finding that the examiner or the coordinator will give you, you will build your management plan. So please remember, first situation, then background, at the point of assessment, you will ask the examiner and then give your recommendation. And once you reach the recommendation, you will write what will be done, who will do this, when it will be done, why it will be done, and where it will be done. This will cover all the points in the station and all the points in each patient. Again, how to avoid failure in the station? ask for details. When you reach the point of assessment, ask for more details. If you didn't ask the examiner about details, means you are not safe. You are building a plan without base. So you have to ask. The minimum, the minimum information you need to ask about in this station is the partogram to know the progress of labor. The CTG to know about the condition of the fetal heart, and the condition of the contraction. The BV examination, especially like in the case we just now discussed, you need to know the cervical dilatation, effacement, the head position and the station, the condition of the membranes, and the like, or if she is already ruptured her membranes. You should ask about the risk factors, like bleeding, like the vital signs if the patient is hypertensive, and ask if there are any investigations done. So these are the minimum details you need to ask about it in any station or any patient in the labor world. The Bartogram, the CTG, the last BV findings, the risk factors if there, and the result of investigations. Again, avoid failure. This is a labor room prioritization sta uh, station. So if you mention the priority, what's needed from you in this station, what will be done, who will do, and when it will be done, then you will justify. So if you miss the priority with the stress of the exam, if you didn't remember when it will be done, this means you lost a very big part of your station. You lost the main point of this station, which is the priority. So there are general rules to remember the priority. 
the patient may be urgent or semi-urgent or non-urgent. Which patient who are urgent? Any patient who's bleeding, any patient with pathological CTG, prolonged second stage of labor, or severe preeclampsia, these are the scenarios that he will give you in the station. Then you will classify the patient as urgent in this station, or patient who scored the prolapse, for example. So now this is an urgent case. Remaining semi-urgent and non-urgent, and this is a point of conflict. Uh, I can see that some candidates are classifying the patient in the labor ward as non-urgent or semi-urgent. But I will ask you a question now. If the patient is coming for induction of labor, or if the patient is coming for elective cesarean section, or she's waiting to come in, this patient, all of you, will say this is a non-urgent case. So will you put this case in the same category as a patient in labor? I don't think so. This is my point of view regarding this part. I can see that now we know which cases are urgent. Any patient in labor, she's a semi-urgent case until proved otherwise. The non-urgent cases are the cases who are waiting for induction of labor or are coming for elective cesarean section. If you are in doubt, please say the higher category. So if you are in doubt, if this case is semi-urgent or urgent, please say it urgent. If you say it urgent, it means you will take extra precautions, so it means you are a safe doctor. But please don't take the lower category. So again, the general rules, any patient in labor, is a semi-urgent case until proved otherwise. Any patient who's coming for induction or for elective cesarean section, this is a non-urgent case. Any patient with any problem, any urgent situation like bleeding, CTG, prolonged second stage, or severe preeclampsia or cord, this is an urgent case. Another point for the priority, remember, always mothers comes first. If you have two patients, one of them, there is maternal compromise, a condition that may affect the mother's life, like severe antibartum hemorrhage or severe postpartum hemorrhage. And there is another room that you have, a pathological CTG. Which room you will go first? You will go to the lady. You will go to the mother, because saving the mother's life comes as a priority than the baby. So these are the general rules for priority, if you remember these rules, I think you will avoid failure in this station. As I said before, all for help, either the consultant on duty, if he's busy, another consultant, if you have one or more urgent cases, you may need to call for help from other specialities like the anesthetist, the neonatologist, the hematologist, according to the situation. But if this, this station, you didn't mention call for help from your consultant or from different specialities, I'm sorry, you will fail this station. So still, we are trying to avoid failure. Then whatever you will perform, you can gain at least borderline. So please remember call for help. Push the emergency buzzer if you have a cord prolapse, if you have antibartum or postpartum hemorrhage, if you have shoulder dystocia. So always remember to call for help. very important point to assign the tasks properly. As we said, different level of competences, you have to ensure, you have to ensure the level of competency of the ST2 before sending him to perform a certain procedure. During your discussion, avoid undermining your colleagues, especially the midwives. For example, if there is one case in the midwifery unit and you want to transfer her to the labor ward, you can say in a polite way, this case needs to be assessed by the consultant and for more close observation. Don't say because the midwifer unit is lacking this uh, instrument or lacking the CTG or there is no enough experience there. This means you are undermining your colleagues and this will not be accepted and you will fail in the communication with colleagues in this point. How to assign the tasks properly? Again, after ensuring the level of competency, 
the general rules. If there is a danger to the mother, go yourself and call for help. So if there is any condition affecting the mother's life or endangering the mother's life, say I will go myself and I will call for help from the consultant and from the anesthetist or from the ICU and other specialties if you want. If the baby is in danger and you are busy with a mother which is in danger, you can send your registrars from ST2 to ST4. For the routine checks, just for examination to fix the CTG, to apologize for waiting cases, you can send the midwife. Again, in the urgent cases, involve the consultant and remember to call for help. If you are going for any urgent case, you will assign the tasks and ask your colleagues to join you once they finish the task, they were delegated for it. So I will go this mother, she's in danger. This is an urgent case. She has an antipartum hemorrhage. So I will go for, your, for the patient myself and I will I call my consultant and I will ask my colleagues once they finish their job to come and join me in this room. So this is a point of how to assign properly and avoid undermine. Please remember this point. I always remember it because one of my colleagues during the practice before my exam, he will always used to remember me of this point. If you have a patient in preterm labor, you have to mention that you discussed the availability, the availability of cuts in the NICU or SCABO. Any case of preterm labor, you have to check. And according to the availability, you will continue management. If there is cuts available, if not available, you will arrange for transfer better to be a neutral transfer. Very important point, very important point. And usually most of us, we will forget it in this stage. The panoramic view or what's called helicopter view. Now you have an urgent situation. You are going to leave the labor world. You are going to be engaged in an emergency or urgent situation, either in the theater or with one patient doing an instrumental delivery, for example. Before leaving to the theater or before being engaged in any situation, say, I have to ensure the safety of other patients by taking a panoramic view of the board to ensure that there is no other urgent cases that needs help. If you need, you can call other ST5 or other consultant to be there in the labor ward during the time you are busy. You cannot leave the labor ward alone while there are urgent cases. So please always remember this sentence. Uh, I'm going, I will go to this patient myself because this is an urgent case. But before being engaged or before leaving the labor ward to the theater, I will take a panoramic look to the board to see if there is any other urgent cases I will call from, for help from my consultant or from my ST5 colleagues. Again, to avoid failure, if you are going for any procedure in the theater, please ensure that there is consent for the procedure. And if there is need for blood transfusion, that the patient has no objection regarding the blood transfusion. So these are the nine points in the station. How to avoid failure? Situation awareness, the handover time and time of last observation, and who is there with you and where is your consultant? These all fall under the points of information gathering. The second point is go room by room. Use the SPAR tool. The SPAR tool will help you to remember the steps of your answer, and this will give more bright picture about your clinical knowledge. Always call for help. And call for help, it's a domain of safety and communication. If you didn't, I will call for help, means you failed the safety, you failed the communication. Please ask for more details. No plan without enough information. If you did not get the enough information, you will fail in the information gathering. The least information you need to know, the last BV examination, the Bartogram for the progressive labor, the CTG for the contraction and the fetal heart, 
and if there is any other risk factors and if there are any investigations. A case of labor word prioritization, you should mention the priority. Don't forget the priority in this case. This station is made for the priority and the leadership. So this is a point of safety. If you didn't mention the priority, I'm sorry, you will fail the safety. Delegate the task to the colleagues appropriately. This falls under the safety and the communication. And avoid undermining colleagues, again, under communication. Discuss the availability of the neonatal unit in preterm labor. This is safety, communication, and information gathering. The last point, but not the least, and a very important point, if you are going to leave the labor world for any reason, please take a panoramic look to the board, ensure that there is no other urgent cases that needs help from different colleagues or the consultant, and ensure that there is consent for the procedure that you are going to do it. If you cover this point, believe me, you will pass. If you have some difficulties, at least you will get borderline. So, how to approach the station? Bar, situation, background, assessment. Here, at the point of assessment, you will ask for more details from the examiner and then give your recommendation what will be done, who will do this, when it will be done, the degree of urgency, why it will be done, and where it will be done. My advice during the reading time. Write in your notes the SBAR and the five Ws. What will be done? Who will do? When will do? Where will do? And why will do? Then go and read the cases one by one and put the plan of management in your mind. Once the reading time finish, go through the SBAR and the five Ws. It will save you in this station. And this is the way to approach this station. Thank you so much. I hope it was useful. Uh, I will arrange um, a practice session tomorrow. Uh, most probably it will be around uh, 3 p.m., uh, which means uh, 12 p.m. UK time. I will announce on the group. I will send the link for all those who are interested to practice how to approach a labor board priority case. Please. Remember me in your prayers. If you find it useful, please share it with your friend and please subscribe to the YouTube channel because I'm having some cyber attacks. I don't know why, but uh, I need your support. Thank you so much for your um, attendance and hope it, it is useful for you. See you next week.